Hi, my name is Elsa Rose and our video is about going through Lintas with dyslexia and moving up from primary school to secondary school. Hi, my name is Primrose and, and these are my thoughts, feelings and journey at Lintas so far. Um, I don't remember when they told me I was dyslexic, but I still when I was younger, but I remember and I still do whenever I'm quiet reading, I pretend I'm reading a book. Learning before was um, stressful sometimes because when I couldn't spell a word, um, I would be really stressed out and my mind would go blank. And I didn't like it when teachers printed out my spelling mistakes. If I couldn't read big sections or a word, I would read the sentence, then split the word, and then um, split the word multiple ways and see if it would make sense in the sentence. Um, the strategies that have helped me the most are the robin, rabbit, and tiger words, which, and open syllables. Have go, um, it, the O would say its name, and then if you, if you put a T, it would be a closed syllable and it would say it's sound. Um, proud of the students were when I got through SATs and loads of tests, especially SATs because I knew I did get a couple of questions right and I didn't have to guess them. Um, I've Here are some of my tips for teachers. If you know that someone's dyslexic, then um, try not to rush them with their work or um, put them on the spot, especially if you ask them to read something out in front of the class because it'll get embarrassing sometimes. Mrs. Sharon has um, helped me with my reading, writing and handwriting. And um, when we do tests, just practice tests, it'd be nice if um, all the dyslexia people would go with Miss Weir and Mr. Sharon to practice. <laughs> when I grow up, I would like to work around animals or be a dance or swimming teacher. If you've just discovered that you're dyslexic, don't worry because you will get help with dyslexic teachers and by the time you're older, you um, get better with dyslexia. I hope that they um, help me with my dyslexia and, um, and uh, my fears of that. Um, the older kids will point me out that I have dyslexia, which I don't want to happen. Hi, my name is Frankie, and here are my reflections on Lintas so far. I guess I'm also going to be talking about changes from year six to year seven, which, if you think about it, is a pretty big change. When I was first um, said as being dyslexic, I didn't really know. I just thought I'm Swee was helping me out. And but like in year three, when I was still writing my name backwards, I realised there was something wrong. And in year four, I fully understood. And um, I but also I used to really hate reading. Now now I know why it is. I really love it. What I like about reading is like. I like it now because if you get a really good book, you can get into it and you just really want to read every night. So, I didn't really understand it and people kept on trying to talk to me about it, but I really didn't understand what in the world they were getting on about. So, but well, nothing really happened until in the middle of the summer. Well, I was going to the science museum with one of my friends and my mum, who had told his mum, had told him and he had understood that. Something about that kind of bugged me that my friend was something about me that I didn't. 
<sighs> I guess, but then I'm blown over, so it's probably better it happened that way anyway. So by the time I got back to year five, everything, I sort of understand it and I'm better. So Mr. Chan started taking me on Wednesdays. Learning, like, learning in year two was like, it was fun in the writing books in the morning, but I was always like on the first question whenever he was like halfway through and almost finished. And how did that make you feel? I felt like that I needed to work a bit harder and I didn't really understand how they could do it so quick. Now I kind of like it in a way, because you get a little extra time for stuff. Uh, you get to work with great stuff, you get to miss boring parts of lessons. Um, okay, well that doesn't happen too much. Often I'm getting taken as the worst times possible, but sometimes it's good times. Anyway, it changes. Um, so, we sort of work on... The on spellings, uh, high and medium frequency words, so that it's easier to spell stuff. And well, at the beginning I didn't really understand it. Now I kind of get it a bit better, but it's just part of the general day course. So it's sort of just like a thing that happens. It's not like a thing that's so weird anymore. some of my reading strategies if you like if there was a word that doesn't make sense look at the sentence around it and see if the sentence will like help that the word make sense to you if like there's a chunk of writing um uh, don't like be don't make it feel like daunting just be excited and just kind of to see what's going to happen in it my writing and spelling strategies are like so when you have the long piece of writing to do, you know, like long paragraphs, like think of three ideas, but then deeply explain each idea, and that will like that will make a good paragraph, and just come up with three ideas for every paragraph. And for spelling, like chunk the word, chunk the word up, and like spell it how you um you think it would, um, spell it how it sounds, like how you think it would, whereas nobody gets spelling right all the time. Sharon taught me this thing where you can do tiger, rabbit, robin. It's a way of splitting words up that you can't read to help you. <sighs> Whenever I read, I get distracted easily. So what I normally do, try and do is read a bit. I normally read quite slowly, it's sort of like word by word. Sometimes if it's a more simple word, I can go do 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 do. And so sort of whenever I feel like I'm about to get distracted by something, I try and find an ending point or like a chapter, which is a paragraph or some, some, or on a cliffhanger or just something where I can fold the page over, put a bookmark in, whatever, put the book down, then go off, do my distractingness, get that over with so I can come back and keep reading. The problem is, sometimes that doesn't happen and I get distracted, drop the book, run off do whatever I was doing, come back. There's funny ways of remembering spelling rules, like droppy rules. Well, if you've got a word with a split diagraph and the E on the end, and then you're adding a word ending that starts with a vowel, like ing or whatever, then you've got to drop the E. But if it starts with a consonant, it's okay. You can stay this time, man. Like achievements are like in your stats when you do reading tests and you think you've done well and you get through it and you just feel like so relaxed afterwards. Well, you can't, I quite like, I'm quite proud of my drawing sometimes. I got third in the silent art competition once. That was great in my category. It was, well, I managed to learn up to spot. Spelling the days of the week is hard. People say it's not, but it is. Thursdays, just 
irritating like crazy uh -huh. trying to remember the word just by looking at it for ages it, stuff like that is painful but it pays off in the end here are some tips for teachers teachers could give you challenges and um, will give you challenges but like they could maybe not challenges all the time because we won't be able to like do it all the time. Like to make classes more interesting, you could kind of work art into more of the lessons. It would also be helpful if we did SATS revision with the dyslexic teachers to kind of give us support. The SATS there was much better because there wasn't loads of people um, that just like scribbling away next to you. You knew they were probably really far, just kind of like in a quiet um, classroom with people that have dyslexia as well, so you know that they're the same as you. And is that really important, how the atmosphere is? Yeah, the atmosphere is like, if you have loads of people that are almost finished, it will be like really hard and you'll be just going rushing it. But with, um, in, the, in the atmosphere, if it's calm, you'll be taking your time and probably getting more of them right. And with teachers, the class teachers, the only thing they should really do to change it is be slightly more, slightly acceptant if something's taken a while to sink in. And like they're already pretty accepting, yeah, that, that's good. And sometimes it just takes that little few minutes just to get the ideas to come because sometimes think of it like a corridor. They're at one end, and then your mouth is at the other, or your brain or whatever, and they've got to come down that corridor, sort of building themselves up to come out. Um, I feel like about being part of the LCD team um, is like I feel more confident and they've really helped me out with it because before I would just I would still be struggling but now I understand why and it's just like give me really good tips on how to do it and um, like taught me how to keep calm. In the future I really like to be a swimmer because I really enjoy swimming and I think I'm quite good at it. And um, I also really want to be an engineer because I like kind of fixing things and seeing them work at the end. So maybe like both or something. When I grow up, I want to be a comic book artist. If you just found out you're dyslexic, kind of don't feel worried because one in ten people are dyslexic, so you're not alone out there. And if you're really, really worried about it, it's actually okay, because, well, if you think about it, everyone in the future is going to be using typing and all that, and the future is fixing all the spelling mistakes for you. Plus, there's loads of things you can do to help. Like, if you want to be some, or if you want to be some author that writes everything with a quill pen, then... Grab a dictionary or a spell checker or just something, and it really helps. I've seen this program that Mr. Sharon uses. He, this, he attaches this little thing to his ear. You don't need to, really. It's just a little, a little thing. But it's called voice to text. So you, you say stuff, and then it writes it down. What I find really cool is the punctuation. Because you can say comma, and it'll put a comma, not just write the word comma, and full stop. And if you, I think if you just say go to sleep, it actually goes to sleep, the thing. It's just Brilliant. If you are dyslexic and you're just learning, like keep calm and um, do those tips. And like you, by the time you've got to year six, you might be slow now, but you would have made so much progress, and you'll be almost just the same as everybody else. Well, um, my hopes are that I'm going to make good friends at. Um, so like during something I like, like I could make some friends in swimming maybe. And also um, to like the lessons are good and the teachers are nice. So they have a dyslexia so that is good in this one. To be honest, I think we're really lucky. This is amazing. And well, I hope they give us the time to our ideas run. Because to be honest, the only downside to it this one is we're a bit slower than other people in the whole writing and reading thing but it's not that much and 
I can get around it. And I just hope they understand if sometimes I get brain cramp and I get stuck. Um, Here are my thoughts, feelings and journeys so far. When I first found out that I was dyslexic, I can't really remember, but I remember in year two that I was writing slower and my handwriting was way messier and I was learning, I was like learning slower than everybody else and I felt really different. Now I feel with my dyslexia that I have an advantage for going out with Miss Weir and I'm and I feel like I'm now an average learner working at around the level. Uh, I feel like my spelling has got much better and Miss this year in year six Miss Hawthorne's pushed so now words that I had no idea how to spell I can spell quite easily. Here are some of my strategies. If you um, want to follow a word along or it's tricking you to chunk it down, maybe you could just use a post-it note or like a piece of paper or a ruler. Or, you, or there are chunkers which you can get which are really useful. What are chunkers? Uh, they're like a see-through. They're see-through and there's one. There's some here. These are chunker things. Mm. Do you want to describe to on camera what a chunker is? This is new. Um, well this is what I call a chunker thing, which you can like follow the word along. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have a strategy for spelling, I kind of just learn them, but for for example for because this is a habit that I still use because I've just I've used it so much when I was learning it that now I just do it without thinking. Uh, like, think of words for example, big elephants can add up sums easily. That stands for because. If you're in a reading test, my strategies are just to look at the, um, look at like what it's asking you really clearly and like maybe look back at the bits that would help you and then it should become clear. And for other subjects, I think just listen to the teacher, well, just listen to the teacher. My proudest achievements are probably, my pr most proudest achievement is my reading, as now I'm reading quite confident. I still find it tricky to read chapter books with small writing, but I'm reading quite big chapter books nowadays. Well, when I was younger, I thought I could never read the clock like a clock because it seems so hard but now I can so I feel like things that I feel like I won't be confident with now um like for example maths or spelling I feel at secondary school I might become more confident at it I don't think that teachers should put pressure on kids when they're like reading slowly or writing as that's kind of what dyslexia is, it slows you down a bit. I think with things like spelling tests and teachers challenging you, they should challenge dyslexia kids to not to like the breaking point to where they just don't know what to do and don't, but kind of give them their own set of spelling words that they need to work on as um, kids who don't have dyslexia um, their brains work differently, but kids who do have dyslexia, they like need a bit more help and support. When I'm older, I have a massive list, um, but basically I want to experiment with lots of different jobs. Like maybe I want to like look after animals at the same and but also I kind of really want to work in like a cafe or like a pub or something. The advice that I give to a year two once they've just found out that they're dyslexic is calm down because it's not the biggest deal in the world. 
and also I feel like it sets even more goals that you can achieve for like spelling loads of kids can achieve them but dyslexic kids can like it feels like you achieve more when you learn how to spell really complicated words. My fears for secondary school is that teachers won't actually take in that we need more time and be not be patient. My hopes for secondary school is that um, I hope that primary school has prepared me quite a lot so it won't be a massive jump but I feel like it has so I'm quite happy. Thank you for watching our video. I hope all our advice and facts has helped you.